is uh, Dr. Shilpa um, Kagadi. Did I say that right? Okay. And then uh, she is a graduate of the Imperial, Imperial College in, uh, of in London and is currently um, doing an observership here. And, uh, and sh she is a postdoctoral research fellow um, at Harvard Medical School. And she's going to be talking about um, dry ice. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be talking about one of my projects that I've been working on at Boston, and that's looking at the um, chemokine-mediated um, mechanisms of antigen-presenting cell trafficking in dry eye disease. So why do we care about dry eye disease? Well, dry eye disease is a highly prevalent condition affecting um, an estimated 10 million Americans. It's one of the most common causes for patients seeking ophthalmic care and has a significant financial burden to the healthcare system. So this is a model of the immunopathogenesis of dry eye disease taken from a paper by the Fried, Ludfelder, and Michael Stern group in which they proposed that desiccating stress and increased tear film osmolarity leads to activation of the epithelial stress pathway and that this results in the production of inflammatory cytokines which lead to the recruitment of antigen-presenting cells to the ocular surface and their subsequent activation and migration to regional lymph nodes. Uh, once they get to the regional lymph nodes, they subsequently um, activate or prime T cells, which then home to the ocular surface and um, mediate a, um, pathology causing dry eye disease. So uh, we've been looking at the afferent arm of this immune response, looking at uh, APC recruitment to the ocular surface and the, um, the, the dynamics of homing to, to regional lymph nodes. So the, um, the cornea contains several different populations of antigen-presenting cells. The CD11C population, which are a population of dendritic cells within the epithelium, and the CD11B population, uh, where CD11B is a, is a macrophage marker, and this population exists within the stroma, and um, we've been studying the second population, so the CD11B population of the stroma. Um, chemokines are small molecular weight cytokines, and they have some neuroprotective properties, and they have a critical role in regulating the migration and activation of, of immune cells. And to date, there is uh, limited data on the, the role of chemokines in dry eye disease. So we hypothesized that desiccating stress would lead to an upregulation of chemokine receptor expression by antigen-presenting cells and um, an increase in the expression of their respective chemokine ligands on the ocular surface, which will lead to an ingress of APCs and their subsequent homing to lymphoid tissues. So we've been looking at these four chemokine receptors. Now, CCR1, 2, and 5 are expressed by immature antigen-presenting cells and are responsible for mediating trafficking of antigen-presenting cells to, to sites of inflammation. And CCR7 is expressed on mature APCs, and they are responsible for facilitating um, trafficking to, to, lymph, to lymph nodes. So the lab has developed a validated model of, of dry eye disease where we take naive mice and we place them in a controlled environment chamber and we regulate environmental factors such as humidity, temperature, and airflow. And secondly, we also inject them with an antimuscarinic drug, scopolamine, to further dry aqueous secretions. And during this time period, we, um, we check the clinical thoracine staining score at regular intervals to confirm the induction and the maintenance of dry eye disease. Okay. So the first thing that we did is we looked at the numbers of CD11 B cells infiltrating the uh, corneal stroma, and we had two time points. We had an early time point, stage four, and a late time point, stage 12, and we found a significant increase in the number of CD11 B cells at our late time point, stage 12, but not at day four. And this increase was apparent in, um, in all three regions of the cornea that we looked at, the central, paracentral, and peripheral regions. Uh, 
Secondly, he looked at chemokine receptor expression on CD11B cells, and he found an upregulation of chemokine receptors uh, on these cells at day 12, and this is statistically significant, but not at day 4. And this is apparent for all four chemokine receptors that we looked at. Uh, next, he looked at the expression of chemokine ligands in the ocular surface, including both the conjunctiva and the cornea, and we found a statistically significant increase in the expression of CTL4 and CTL5 on the ocular surface. And lastly, we looked, uh, using flow cytometry, we looked at the frequencies of CTR7, ex um, CTR7 on mature um, antigen presenting cells in draining lymph nodes. And as I said earlier, CTR7 mediates or facilitates um, trafficking to the lymph node. And we can see that we saw a progressive increase in the frequency of this population um, for day four and even more so at day 12. So in summary, uh, we, we've demonstrated that there are increased frequencies of CD11B ATC within the cornea or the stroma in dry eye disease, and this is associated with an upregulation of chemokine receptors by these cells and an elevated expression of chemokine ligands in the ocular surface and increased homing of CCR7 expressing mature ATCs to draining lymph nodes. So in conclusion, um, chemokine-mediated mechanisms of cell trafficking have an important role in the initiation of the immune response by influencing both the migration of ATCs to the ocular surface and subsequent homing of these cells to draining lymph nodes where they can initiate um, an, an autoimmune uh, T-cell response. Uh, I'd like to thank my mentor, Dr. Dana, and other members of the Dana lab that have helped with, uh, with this work and also acknowledge Camden Sports. <laughs> Thank you, and I'll be happy to take any questions. <laughs> yeah. So the question was, was uh, how can the uh, uh, dysregulation of the immune system in regards to immunity be brought into play with systemic deficiencies in the surgery to cover that traumatic situation, traumatic to the marine system, and then subsequent dysregulation of the Okay, so the, the first, um, to your first question, we're actually looking at the CD11C cells of the epithelium at the moment. The reason we decided to focus on the CD11B cells of the stroma was that they are the main antigen presenting cell population of the cornea and their numbers are um, uh, much larger comparably to the epithelial antigen presenting cell population. So it was logical that that would be our first starting point. And in terms of which cells are expressing the chemokine ligands, uh, we think the majority of the chemokine ligands are coming from the epithelial cells or the, the stroma cells themselves, so non-immune non cells.
Yeah, no, we're looking at that to and why, we see. Why, why is that so good? Why, why are we getting a very good response? Yes, we see. We see. Expect, I mean, we expect that to be Exactly, good. exactly. And the same with the Convoy Fiber, we see similar strains throughout all three departments. Thank you. Thank you.